Hey Pillars, welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a carbon fiber rim failure that is on YouTube that I found. It's quite old from 2017, but it has over 6 million views and I think it has gone up in popularity as of recently. So I thought what better way to actually explain how this could have been avoided and the physics and the science behind this carbon fiber failure because when I read through the comments, they weren't so positive and just pointing towards one thing, one factor when there's multiple factors to be considered and I thought that we can learn something positive out of this carbon fiber failure and on top of that no one was injured severely other than his wallet so with that being said i thought let's get into this video and explain what exactly happened oh, oh there's no. a flat tire oh, oh, oh flat tire robert i was videoing <laughs> you get that on sound i think so man can you smell that guy Oh, look at the whole wheel track. Oh, man. Is that, is that carbon? Yeah. Now, I put my headphones on so I can listen to the audio and explain what's happening in the video. But it's very lucky that when we're looking at this video, he is going downhill towards the feed zone while the other cyclists are going uphill. And it's really good that this happened because if he would have had this failure going downhill with the rest of the group, he could have crashed into other people and injuring more people. Plus, when he did descend, he wasn't going at speed. <laughs> Now right away, I knew that was a carbon fiber rim failure and not an inner tube popping. Usually with inner tubes, you will barely sometimes even hear it. So the fact that it's that loud, I knew it was a carbon fiber rim. And on top of that, I've worked at enough bike shops that usually it has to happen when there's a lot of air in the inner tube that you'll hear that loud of a noise. So for that reason, off the top, I knew it was a carbon fiber rim failure. And the person recording this, obviously thinks it's an inner tube as a very novice cyclist would. So he's descending, luckily no one's around. Oh, oh, there's a no. flat tire. The person comments, oh, it's a flat tire. And everyone's very disappointed. Now he screams, woohoo! No. which I just think is hilarious. He thinks that he is on a roller coaster. Now he is on a roller coaster of disappointment because when he realizes that it is in fact his carbon rim that has failed, I think he's going to be quite sad. But I just think it's probably did he even hear it that's that's what really intrigues me with this video is that he just you know could have literally crashed and he's you know so excited that he screams woohoo like he's on a like a roller coaster like he's super mario collecting coins like it's just crazy now i'm going to pause the video right here and zoom in on the people at the feed station now at the end of the day i always say this on my channel you can spend your money how you want you can do whatever you want you can dress however you want but this is just quite interesting. I've been to a lot of cycling events in my young years of riding and racing, doing group rides and whatnot, and I have never seen the goth community come together with the cycling community. I think that is quite interesting. That is quite a, a mix-up. This is like the Avenger extended universe of cycling and goths. I just never thought I would see the day that this crossover would actually come to fruition. There's there's a, a blue-haired lady as well handing out strawberries. Now, I don't know what that is in her hand. I'm gonna leave you guys to decide what that is. Uh, I don't know what device that is. <laughs> Robert, I was videoing. Now the person videotaping says the cyclist's name is Robert, so at least we can attach a name to the cyclist now. But he says, Robert, I was videoing. And then Robert lets out this chuckle of a laugh like, <laughs> I just broke my carbon fiber rim. Did you get that on sound? And he says, did you get that on sound? Which I just, I've never heard that expression before. Usually it's, did you get that on tape or did you get that on video? I've never heard, did you get that on sound? So maybe he's very disoriented with the fact that he's just blown his probably expensive carbon fiber rim and he's just laughing. Like it just doesn't even phase him that, you know, that could have easily been a 700, a thousand dollar rim. And to him, it's just peanuts at this point. He's just laughing like, Haha, did you get that on sound? <laughs> did you get that on sound? I just have never seen that before. Usually when I've broken a rim, I was so pissed. So I can only imagine if I have a carbon fiber failure, how mad I would be. I would never laugh like Robert does, which I got to give it to him. He's he's living his best life just laughing at like, ha did, did you see that? Did you guys get that on sound? I just broke my rim. However, I think Robert thought perhaps that it was a flat tire as the sound could have been mistaken for it. And on top of that, we had the goths in the background saying it was a flat tire. Flat tire. So maybe he was under the impression it was a flat tire. So when he gets off and says the whole wheel is trashed. I think so, man. Can you smell that guy? Oh, look at the whole wheel's trashed. 
I think he's quite disappointed when he sees the structural failure in the rim. I'll zoom in on it right here. You can see he's pointing towards it. And I think there's a little bit of disappointment in his voice. And then another onlooker says, is that carbon? Oh man. Is that, is that carbon? Yeah. Now, I think that's probably the most overused question that ever gets asked. Like I said, I've worked at bike shops and you'll always hear, is that carbon? Is that carbon? Is that carbon? And just the look on this guy's face says it all. He goes, yep, that's that's carbon. And before we continue, I just want to say that Robert's head mirror really reminds me of a Dragon Ball Z character that have scouters. They look identical to one another. So that's one trend I've never seen picked up in cycling. I've yet to see someone with a head mirror on a group ride, but very, very interesting stuff that Robert is rocking. Now, the people in the comment section that talked about his weight and how that impacted the carbon fiber rim failing are not entirely wrong. They just didn't do it in a positive manner that actually promotes education, which I'm trying to do in this video. And in no way am I shaming heavier riders or Robert. I myself in the past have been 100 kilograms or 220 at one point. So I've been there as a heavy cyclist. So in no way is this video uh, making fun or poking fun at someone. It's really to explain how this could be avoided because like I said at the beginning of the video, we're really lucky in the situation that he wasn't around any cyclists when this actually failed. We're lucky he wasn't going at speed where he could properly break. He was lucky it wasn't a front wheel also. So there's a lot of factors that this video we can leave feeling at least somewhat good about it. The fact that no one injured themselves, but this is a learning experience for heavier riders. Now I'm going to first explain whether or not Robert chose the right material. Should he have went with aluminum or was he right choosing carbon fiber? Because a lot of people in the comment section just thought he chose wrong because he chose the lightweight carbon which is in fact true and i'll explain why but it's kind of contradictory because i'm saying he did choose the right material he chose carbon but he just didn't choose the correct depth of carbon and i'm going to quickly explain why carbon fiber is a stronger material than aluminum for heavier riders and it's quite simple for aluminum the fatigue life that aluminum rims have is not substantial it has pretty thin walls and to make a super strong stiff rim for heavier riders in aluminum would just be too heavy and it wouldn't be a wheel that really encourages you to ride so for that reason the only way you can get a rim that is stiff and strong but also lightweight is through carbon and that's when we link it back to the fact that he did choose the right material he just didn't choose the right depth of rim and just to add on to this point i've helped a lot of cyclists heavier cyclists when i was in the cycling industry choose which wheels would be best for them and usually when they would choose alloy rims they would come back to the bike shop because spokes would be breaking nipples would be breaking on the bike on the wheels and that just would leave them really frustrated and that's when when i would actually point them towards carbon fiber rims in that situation it wasn't because i was trying to oversell them or get them to buy more expensive parts it's because of the situation because they are heavier riders and the fact that they will lose weight through cycling and even if that's not one of their priorities they just want to be do some fitness do do some group rides just be more social then having a carbon fiber rim is going to allow that because it will be stiffer it will be lighter and that's the only true way that you can get a sturdy stiff rim that has a long lifespan but also will be lightweight and not super heavy and actually encourage riding so just to reiterate carbon fiber it has a longer lifespan when it comes to wear and tear than aluminum rim does and when it comes to heavier riders lifespan is super super important so i will always push carbon fiber being the material that's needed when it comes to a heavier rider and their decision to choose what material for rims. Now, taking a look at Robert's bike, we can see that he's running 35 millimeter carbon fiber rims, which I would say for his weight is too shallow. It's usually recommended for riders of 80 kilograms or about 175 pounds that they should be running a deep section rim of at least 58 millimeters uh, in depth which will increase the stiffness and strength of the rim. And in terms of the physics and the explanation why having more depth actually makes a wheel stronger, you gotta think of it that a rim has a lot of air. So the more shallow the area of the rim is, the less strength it will be. So for a lightweight rider, that's let's say less than 70 kilograms, you know, having a shallow rim of 35 millimeters or lower is not a problem. But when you start becoming a heavier rider, you wanna actually create more material around the rim, which is increasing the depth of the rim, which will increase the rigidity and also the stiffness of the rim and will yield a stronger rim 
for said heavier rider and to further explain every spoke goes through a cycle of each revolution it's going to experience a maximum tension load and then no tension and it's that small small movement of the spoke at the hub and the axle and in the rim that causes overall wheel fatigue and just going a couple points back if we fill the void of the rim and have more depth it's going to create a stiffer rim which will decrease the fatigue that the rim will experience which will be great and will yield less of a chance to have catastrophic uh, carbon fiber rim failures like we do have in this situation and it should just be noted that because the rim is around 35 millimeters it's not going to be as stiff as a 60 millimeter rim and for that reason it's going to experience a lot more flex a lot more unnecessary fatigue that it's really not designed for these shallow rims are designed for lighter weight cyclists so I'm not saying that he can't ride a carbon fiber rim it's just he has to ride one that has a deeper section which in this situation if he's at least 100 kilograms i would suggest anything above 60 millimeters could have avoided his whole this whole situation and just now that rim has to be thrown out there's no way you can really repair it so i would have to link this you know catastrophic failure of carbon fiber rim to the fact that there was a poor selection of rim and i would have to blame either him or you know maybe he's a new cyclist so whoever he bought them off of or the bike shop that sold them to him did a poor job you should not be selling rims anything less than 60 millimeters to anyone that doesn't weigh less than 80 kilograms and if he was running deeper section rims he could actually lower the tire pressure where in this situation because they're shallow rims he would have to increase the tire pressure so even just for comfort he would have been better off running a deeper section rim so yet again i just blame the local bike shop or whoever sold them you should not be selling rims i'll reiterate this do not buy rims do not sell rims if you are above you know 80 kilograms it has to be 60 millimeters or deeper especially if you don't want to have to run into uh, spokes breaking or nipples breaking or anything of that nature go away from rims uh, that are aluminum if you are a heavier rider stick to carbon I know it's an investment but you don't want to have to have to keep taking your bike to get fixed or to keep buying aluminum rims if you are a heavier rider unfortunately I do suggest you have to ride carbon fiber rims but this whole video could have been avoided if you would have had the proper rim selection in terms of depth so I hope I was able to teach you guys something about carbon fiber rims especially for heavier riders how this could have been avoided all that good stuff and in the end of the day the fact that he didn't injure himself is just a lesson a lesson on his wallet and better selection in the future i hopefully he rides he's still riding and other than that there's really not much to say this video was really interesting it was very interesting with the golfs and uh, all that good stuff going on so i hope you guys did learn something i hope it was entertaining for you guys if you guys did like the video smash the like button uh subscribe to the channel lots more cycling content coming down the line and until the next one keep on pedaling